But then, as you well know, as you move through the practice, while you're doing the rising and falling, you begin to feel the different sensations, the feelings that arise in the body, don't you? You know, because the concentration is building up and so our perception is building up, our awareness is building up due to the mindfulness uh, that we're becoming better at. We're able to be more mindful and stay in the present moment more so we can see more clearly and perceive more clearly what is actually happening to us. Uh, through the uh, cultivation of the first foundation of mindfulness, we're able to see the actual components of the body, the elemental nature of the body. I'm talking here very Burmese Sidor like I know, but still it's important, I think, in this day and age to understand correctly. So we'll start to uh, experience within the body the different elements of the body, fire, water, air, etc. But also what we begin to experience is the feeling tone of the different sensations, whether physical or mental, but especially physical. Now, this aspect of the practice, the second foundation of mindfulness, Vedana, or Vedana, is a really important part of the practice because, as we know in the Buddhist teachings, the goal of the practice is to come out of suffering. That's it. That's the goal, to come out of suffering. And uh, we have to understand, and the Buddha explained in the Four Noble Truths, that the cause of suffering is attachment and aversion. And attachment and aversion comes about through feeling. So this is why the second foundation of mindfulness is so important for us to understand because of our reactive patterns to the various physical sensations that we experience and also the mental feelings that arise, but especially the physical sensations. Now, <coughs> this is like a 10 day retreat in four hours. <laughs> so, <laughs> excuse me, but I thought, I found this uh, translation uh, that um, Venerable Tanisara had given on feelings. And I thought you may be interested in this from the words of the Buddha. He's talking about craving and why uh, feelings are so important to notice, to be mindful of, to become aware of. From, fe from feeling as a requisite condition comes craving. Thus it has been said. And this is the way to understand how from feeling as a requisite condition comes craving. If there were no feelings at all in any way of anything anywhere, i.e. feeling born of contact at the eye, feeling born of contact at the ear, feeling born of contact at the nose, feeling born of contact at the tongue, feeling born of contact at the body, or feeling born of contact at the intellect, in the utter absence of feeling from the cessation of feeling, would craving be discerned? And the monks answered the Buddha, no Lord. Thus, this is the cause, this is the reason, this is the origination, this is the requisite condition for craving, i.e. feeling. So it's why it's very, very important in meditation practice that we observe this second foundation of mindfulness very thoroughly. Um, and we do this by just being mindful of them. Whether they're pleasant, whether they're unpleasant, whether they're neutral, we try to observe them. And as we go into our practice, we get so surprised by the level of feelings that are actually there, this which, which we don't um, usually perceive because our awareness is still at a sluggish nature. But as you keep on cultivating your practice, uh, sometimes the feelings become really clear and really strong. Uh, the painful ones are excessively painful sometimes in practice. 
and we have to be very vigilant in noting these feelings in our practice to understand then how craving that feeling that are a conditioned craving to arise in the mind so in this session i'd like you to be aware of the feelings that arise within the body you know the different sensations and your reaction to them uh, so what i'm doing in this little session is incorporating these four foundations of mindfulness but trying to give you a you know, um, a mirror of how these four foundations work. Of course, the four foundations are there all the time. It just, at some points in, during your practice, different ones of them may be more prominent. And certainly in, uh, as the practice uh, goes on, feelings become very prominent in a very short period of time. So they need to be noticed and need, you need to be mindful of them and you need to be able to see eventually the changing nature of these feelings that arise, these sensations that arise and the feeling tone of these sensations that arise. And then we can become aware of, which is the understanding or the insight or the wisdom factor that arises of uh, how craving is coming into the mind. Is it useful? Is it not useful? we are able to develop a discernment in the mind. So let's try again. We'll sit for half an hour this time. So take a comfortable position. In the Mahasi uh, practice, which we're practicing here, Mahasi used to emphasize all the little details that you're experiencing. You know, even if you swallow, he would say, please note swallowing. If you have a painful sensation somewhere in the body, please note painful, painful, painful. Direct your attention to the area and just put, place your attention on my painful, painful, painful. Achy, achy, stiffness, stiffness, hot, hot itchy, itchy, and it's quite difficult to do sometimes, isn't it? Sometimes you'll feel a lot of itchiness in the face, but do we scratch? No, we try to observe the itchy feeling. If we want to scratch, then we have to observe the hand coming up and wanting to scratch. We have to note the mind that wants to scratch. Just little things like that are really the important part of the practice, I think. So let's try again for another half an hour of observing the rising and falling. You can start with, of course, but if the sensations become more obvious, please note the sensations that arise in the body. Throughout the half hour, you may go from the rising and falling, and even within the rising and falling, in the beginning, you may note just the movement, but then you start to perceive the sensationary level of the rising and falling. And you can observe that as well. The rising, falling, rising, falling. Painful, painful, hot, hot, cold, cold, pressure, pressure, tingling, tingling, swallowing, swallowing, heavy, heavy, that kind of thing. Is how we want to practice. Let's see how that goes for a little while. So with a comfortable position once again, just let the mind relax. We don't want to have a tightening of the mind. We will let the mind relax. We don't want to go searching after experience. Allow the experience to come to you and observe it. Each and every one, one after the other.
if there's something quite strong that arises in the body, some sensation, spend a little more time with it. Note it a little more quickly. Painful, 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 like this. Achy, 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 like this. Nothing more obvious be with the rising and falling. Even if you feel sleepy, that's an interesting one because sleepiness, there's a certain sensation around it. Perhaps a heaviness, you can note heavy, 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 heavy.
let's uh, continue with the walking meditation for 20 minutes or so and try to remember what you're doing and remember when the mind has gone off into something and bring it back to the road to the movement of the feet it's a very simple exercise but very uh, effective walking meditation just lifting, placing, lifting, placing, right step, left step, right step, left step. Within that you can also start to become aware of the sensations you experience, lightness, heaviness. Try to keep your attention fully focused on the movement and the sensations that you experience within the walking. 